Hello, and welcome to this overview session for the Oracle Industry Data Exchange. I'll be going through some slides to give some background of why this service made sense to build within Oracle. Uh, then after that, I'll be demoing the service and some of the great outcomes we're driving specifically for the energy and water industry. I'm uh, Jason Duncan Wilson. I lead the team that's building the industry data exchange here at Oracle. I've been at Oracle for quite a while, but prior to that, I spent eight years at a large U.S.-based energy company, spending a lot of time trying to get data across silos to make sense. Uh, so I love that I get to lead a team now that is building solutions that uh, would have helped me in my prior life. Uh, let's, let's get into why uh, we're building the data exchange. So it's no, no question that uh, enterprise systems are the operational backbone that run our world. Um, they're essential for all, all the major companies that make great things happen in the world. And those systems, uh, enterprise systems, are really built to optimize, to solve one area, to really serve customers. In the case of energy, really operate the grid, uh, many other purposes for these systems. Um, and they are intentionally self-oriented. They are trying to solve that goal. They are not trying to worry about whether their data makes sense across the broader world. So this leads to siloed security of that data, which makes a ton of sense. It needs to be super secure. It also leads to a data model that's focused on that set of problems, just specifically for that app. Uh, and this is the state we're in. It results in endless integration for teams that want to leverage the data. So uh, my team's made the pretty safe bet that those systems will continue to be very focused on solving their mission critical problems. Uh, and we're reimagining how to standardize and share that crucial data with that in mind. Uh, some quick stats from McKinsey. Uh, so this isn't just about getting data great. This is about driving value for your company. Um, in terms of growth, uh, they estimate that uh, there's a 75% increase to EBITDA for companies that achieve a holistic data transformation. I'd like to go through uh, some real life data from enterprise systems. Uh, so this is an example of EV charging station status codes. When I've asked, presented this in the past and asked people, what is this? What do you think these values mean for E, P, and T? If they take a guess, uh, get all kinds of wild guesses. Ultimately, none of them are right. Uh, e means available, P means planned, T means temporarily unavailable. I'll show another example. These are actual uh, equipment ID types coming from one of uh, our energy and water applications, actually, at Oracle. Uh, again, super hard to guess, could probably maybe guess the middle one serial number, but the rest, uh, not so much. And even if we get to data that people think they could guess just by looking at it like zip code, um, in this case, these are actually, uh, Brazilian zip codes. They overlap with the exact same zip codes as us zip codes. All of this is just to really illustrate that data coming out of enterprise systems, while it uh, definitely solves the problem that's there, it's not really tailored to be shared, um, you know, across across all uh, all mediums. These data sets lack intrinsic meaning, and what we mean by that is intrinsic meaning in data is really data that has meaning independent of context that somebody doesn't need the decoder ring to understand it. They could come to it entirely fresh to decipher what that data is. And that's where we're focused. Um, and we do this every day um, as humans in, in life. You know, we have uh, words and codes and formulas that lead to language mathematics uh, and other, other areas that ultimately drive to this intrinsic meaning. Uh, so if you even just as an example, if you go to the Wikipedia page for Albert Einstein, you can read about all the things he contributed to the world. You can come to some understanding um, and intrinsic meaning of what his life contributed to the world, including uh, his most famous mathematical formula. So 
both uh, language and math uh, in that case. But when we uh, kind of wrangle data from our enterprise systems, uh, we often, if if almost always, fall short of getting to that intrinsic meaning. Sometimes we get to some common protocol, maybe some common content, but almost always falling short of getting to that intrinsic meaning. And that's that's where we're focused with this data exchange. We are focused on aiming for intrinsic meaning, uh, starting from the inside out and and getting to where data that is being sent from systems arrives at that as quickly as possible. So uh, why is this so hard? Well, there's a whole bunch of words on the slide here, all, you know, for anybody that has spent time in data engineering or ETL, uh, you'll know that the, all of these things apply, um, some in varying layers, whether you're going system to system, but definitely if you're wanting to share data across many systems or even with outside parties, uh, most of everything on here comes into play to get to intrinsic meaning. I'd like to show just a quick example of this. So uh, the raw data on the left um, is an example of data for electric vehicle charging uh, locations. Um, certainly you can kind of get a sense for the data, but it lacks meaning in some instances where you'd have to make guesses. Uh, compare that to the data on the right, which is data in the data exchange. Again, focus on getting to intrinsic meaning that's very language-based, uh, non-ambiguous uh, in terms of what it means, um, and very easy to understand coming at it from uh, you know, the outside world. The way we get there is we've been very focused on building ontologies. Ontologies are really the intelligence that connects data from systems in a way that makes sense um, across all the concepts of the world. Um, think of it as the nouns and the verbs that connect the uh, meaning across different or organizations, different systems. And we uh, are building uh, the new data exchange service very much to uh, have a way to connect all these dots. So uh, the, the, the industry data exchange service is a new service on OCI. The, the focus is to take data from any industry source um, and get it to any industry, any, any target needed, whether that be your internal systems or the vendors you work with, or maybe other companies that you work with um, in a standardized uh, data model with standardized understanding and intrinsic meaning uh, for the data. And you'll see some of that as I get into the demo. Uh, again, this service is built on OCI. So um, the kind of rigor of uh, tight, tight security on OCI, interoperable with all the other great OCI services, but with an industry focused focus to it uh, from the data modeling and intelligence standpoint. Okay, so where this fits, uh, this is a picture of, uh, you know, mod like the modern data platform going from really data source to applying that data. Uh, lots of things in between that uh, you'd be accustomed to seeing ETL, uh, event streaming, data lakes, data warehouses, um, and then ultimately applying it in different um, either analytics tooling, data science, or even in other systems. Uh, so where we fit is squarely in the transform and publish space. So in terms of transforming, again, trying to go after that intrinsic or shared meaning and standardization. In terms of publish, uh, getting to really that single pipe for publishing. So a, a way to publish to not just the data lake, but also um, back to the systems that need it, all the systems internally that need it, or even to your external vendors you work with. If we look at the intelligence layers that we're baking into this service, again, they're all uh, based on ontology and, and standard data models. Uh, at the highest level, we're making sure that we have an ontology that spans organizations. So. The concepts that uh, exist in, in, in all industries or organizations are at the highest level. Then we get very much about focused on the industry specific uh, intelligence and data modeling that's needed for each industry. 
In this case, um, you'll see an ontology that's focused on the energy and water industry, as well as one that uh, spans into automotive a bit because electric vehicles are becoming so important for uh, what's, what's happening in the energy space. This is a slide with a lot of words and a lot of graphics on it. Um, and I'll say quickly that the goal here and, and what we've what we've built with the data exchange is that you have a service that runs in your OCI tenancy in a compartment um, that follows all OCI security and all the greatness that comes with OCI. It works well with um, all the OCI services that you see listed on here. Um, and the key is that, uh, you know, as you bring in data and stage it, cleanse it, standardize it, um, and have the, the consent and controls within data exchange, you can share that with um, another party, whether it be an internal party, um, either in the same tenancy um, or in a different tenancy, or with an external party. And the data never leaves OCI. It stays tightly uh, privately secure within OCI so that you've got uh, maximum uh, data security as you share with your, your different vendors or different parties. All right, um, I'd like to take a moment to talk about uh, some focus that we have around graph data. Um, and this isn't a graph data versus relational, this is a relational and graph data uh, approach. So. Relational data, you know, traditional um, tables in, or uh, data in tables is awesome for storing, uh, making it simpler to just connect data together. But ultimately, the, all the connections that are needed for that um, intrinsic meaning between data requires graph to represent all of that well. So we've actually focused on both of these areas. Uh, when we look at the data for the energy and water industry specifically, um, and this is like many, many companies, many industries, uh, you know, you've got your different domains, different departments that have their big focus. So in this case, you've got a, a customer and billing department that's very focused on accounts and bills and, and people. Operations is very focused on, you know, how do you service a particular location and the equipment at that location? And then the, the grid teams are really focused on how do you uh, facilitate and deliver the power to that site. So our goal is to uh, not only connect things in the middle with uh, what's common and have, have ways that the data connects, but also to standardize on the concepts and terms across different domains so that within a company, so that you have that true centralized intelligence and can make all of your data come together with that intrinsic meaning we keep talking about. So this is just a look at a, a bunch of use cases for the energy industry. Um, and it's really trying to convey that, uh, you know, there are a lot of use cases that are emerging for the energy space that require data from multiple internal sources. There's even more now because the, the you know, the grid uh, is becoming a bit of a two-way street uh, previously. It was a bit of a one-way street where you know energy would get produced and get delivered to your site. That's that's the end of it. Now with all the batteries and the solar that's coming in and electric vehicles, it's much more complicated, much more of a two-way street, and much more requiring data to come together from uh, both internal uh, systems within a utility as well as external sources. And then I'll speak briefly about some of the uh, awesome outcomes that are actually coming exclusively from using a knowledge graph around prepping data for uh, generative AI. Okay, so I'd like to go through these couple use cases, these three use cases quickly, because you'll see them uh, throughout the demo. Uh, so grid planning for electric vehicles, virtual power plants, and customer 360, all very relevant to the, the energy and water space. For grid planning for EVs, uh, EVs are drastically changing the landscape of how the grid looks. Uh, the grid really isn't built to handle all the increases that will be coming in the future for, for EVs yet. The specific problems to solve is really, you know, EVs are often growing in um, very focused areas of the grid. 
uh, which is challenging to predict. You know, it's not um, it's not evenly spread across the grid. Uh, the systems within utilities, the grid and customer systems are still siloed at times and need to come together. Um, you know, demand side management programs lack the data to target EV customers appropriately, and that just general picture is, is overall picture is lacking. So what the data exchange enables is uh, bringing data together in a way that you can actually project the EV growth uh, at various grid levels. You'll see that in the demo. Uh, overloaded grid circuits, you know, that connect to customer data are, is, is essential because you need to prompt action to really manage that demand. Uh, and then EV incentive programs can be tailored based on uh, impact to the grid. Uh, virtual power plants is a cool emerging uh, thing in the energy space. Uh, integrating and coordinating distributed energy resources. So this is like big pooled sections of uh, you know generation or storage. Like for instance, the the Googles of the world that have massive battery banks that can be used by a utility to to offset some parts of the grid. Um, again, you know the grid is becoming more of a two way street. So how do you orchestrate all of the different things that are happening? Um, and get the data required from groups to get that unified view. Um, you know, utilities need to know if they can rely on this virtual power plant uh, rather than scaling up traditional power plants. So unifying that picture uh, of data that is you know, related to households and commercial and supply side for the grid, um, all with that intrinsic meaning so that it connects up is uh, what we're focused on with the data exchange. Um, and then your ability, you know, a utility's ability to plan uh, the impacts of virtual power plant modeling with that, that kind of data is uh, much improved. And then customer 360, this is, you know, a term um, and, and a focus that's been around for quite a while. Um, you know, customer complexity is growing um, as a result of a lot of things that are changing the energy and, and water space. Uh, but again, uh, you know, getting all your data in one place uh, isn't quite enough. You really need it to all connect so that you have like the true meaning of the data and know exactly how to react to it. In the case of customer 360, data often comes from five or more systems that all need to be married up in terms of meaning. External da data can be crucial for getting insights that sometimes it's hard to interconnect um, with your data and wrangling all of this based on, on all the avenues is tough. So, um, you know, specifically for the data exchange, connecting customer data based on dozens of IDs is native to how the knowledge graph works within data exchange. Uh, this supports receiving multiple overlapping views of the same customer from multiple source systems without uh, data integrity loss. So, uh, we were talking about connecting up data before, you know, for the energy and water space, if we can connect it up and the way that we have with the data exchange, uh, a key thing for the energy and water space is that you can actually start to connect into data that is on the fringes, not just traditional utility, but connecting in data from the Teslas of the world, the Generax of the world, different views of electric vehicles, battery energy storage systems, shared grid conditions that are all going to be just essential and almost boilerplate in terms of being able to operate the grid and have a good customer experience for energy companies going forward. I'd like to speak about um, why autonomous database has been so essential to the success of what we've done that you'll see in the demo. So uh, at Oracle, there's been a huge focus on getting to a converged database. What this means is that you have a single database that has all kinds of different capabilities and storage within it all in one place. And this specific focus uh, from the database team has been essential to us being successful, being able to store relational data and graph data, which includes the ontologies all in one single place that's converged uh, has been awesome and really has uh, allowed us to interoperate seamlessly between these, these storage methods. For graphs specifically, um, having, being, having the ability to do virtual graph collections on top of data has allowed us to connect four different sources, five different sources that you'll see in the demo into one view of things so that you can query it as one knowledge graph of the world. 
And then uh, again, bridging the world of SQL um, to the world of Sparkle, which is the query language for graph, is done in autonomous database, which is essential because we need to use both to get the outcomes of truly connecting up data that you'll see. All right, so ultimately the outcomes we're focused on driving is leveraging data faster in more places. Uh, this means integrating your data faster, being able to leverage it faster, and supporting enterprise analytics and AI. You know, this is there's a huge amount of work coming, you know, and a huge amount of excitement around all of this right now. But ultimately, getting data standardized and aligned on meaning is a huge accelerator to this space and something we're super excited to be a part of. All right, so let's see it now. It's demo time. Okay. So I'm going to start by taking you through just a couple quick screens that explain, um, you know, what, what's going on with the data exchange. So this is, we're in OCI, in the OCI console, um, you know, same, same place the autonomous database in Vault is. So this is the data exchange. Uh, I've already spun one up. I've already created one here that um, is in place. This is really the service overall. Um, as I click into it, um, what, you, what you'll see are data stores. These are really meant to be the big container of where your data lands as you bring it in to inter integrate it and standardize it and get it to that intrinsic meaning that we've been talking about. Um, so go, diving in a little bit further, um, as you're in a data store, you'll have uh, data sets. And again, these are standardized in terms of meaning of, of the different data sets. We've got that built into the data model for the platform and it's all, all driven as you set them up. Um, they're tagged to the particular source that they came from. Um, so all, all tied together in the UI here. Um, I just wanted to show you that quickly so you could get a sense of that. Once you've got your data exchange and your data store set up with all the different data sets, that's when uh, the different consents with subscribers and different places that it should go uh, come in next. Uh, I'd like to get into the data specifically next. So I'd, quickly, I'll show data. So this is uh, data coming from the customer system from utilities. And I just want to show kind of the transactional nature of the data um, you know, as you'd expect. So this is data that's in very third normal form, very broken out as a transactional system, uh, perfect for um, data integrity for transactional systems. But again, not, not amazing for sharing. Um, you can definitely see the sense of what the data is. This is person data with all of its different attributes and IDs and, and everything in here. Uh, but ultimately, like not not great in terms of intrinsic meaning, lots of codes, lots of assumptions. Uh, juxtapose that to data after it comes through the knowledge graph. Um, and you'll see a very language focused output of data from the knowledge graph. So again, uh, getting to the point that there's um, language at the heart of this, the nouns and verbs that connect the meaning. Um, I'll show another example as well, which is data from electric vehicle charging locations. And this is an example where this person data is coming from a customer system from a, from a utility. The electric vehicle charging locations are actually coming from the U.S. Department of Energy. Um, and again, these are in uh, language form as they're spit out. We'll see a little more of this here in a second. Uh, the awesome thing about autonomous database being converged between relational and graph, as I was mentioning, is you can actually write uh, a graph query, which is what you see here in this red text, and, and merge it with the world of SQL, which is what you see above, uh, to get to new outcomes. So this is an example of querying for a particular person, getting a lot of the uh, related records to what they, are, what, what, the, what they have going on and spitting that out in language form. So in this case, um, is a person, Tony Lombardi, has a utility account, um, has also a self-reported possession of an electric vehicle, uh, has an email address, has an electric service contract. We could go on and on and on, but I tried to constrain it to uh, just, just five areas to show real quick. So just showing the sense of, of taking a lot of different objects from different sources, getting them in language form. Um, so the way that we do this, as I was mentioning, is, is through an ontology. 
And this is this is the energy and water ontology we're working on. Um, just to take a look at it. Um, at the highest level, these these have. I'm going to take this up to a higher degree of less less uh, less focus down on the details, more abstract. So at the highest level, um, there's there's concepts that span industries like person, organization, physical substance, different things that are true of of every uh, legal entities uh, are true of every company and every uh, every industry. But if I take it back down to the lowest level, that's really where you'll see all the great energy and water focus intelligence come in. So let's just query for a couple of things. So let's look for like an electric grid circuit and this will take us right to it. So you can see here that um, it ha this has all the intelligence connections, all the um, kind of language defined semantics that connect the meaning of things in, with uh, the other concepts in the industry and, and with the broader world. Uh, let's look for something else. Let's look for, yeah, water meter. So again, like connected into the rest of the world, uh, connected in terms of concepts. Uh, and this is ultimately what makes the actual data coming from the different source systems uh, make so much sense together. Uh, let's look for just one more thing. Let's look for a transformer just to just to find one more. So, um, and then there are concepts coming from the rest of the world, uh, like you know, uh, like like vehicle models that uh, are so important for starting to understand you know how different models impact the grid. You know. Uh, large batteries versus plug-in hybrids that are much smaller batteries have a very different impact on the grid. All right, so I'd like to jump into a few visualizations of data after it's been standardized and brought all together and uh, put in this great form. The first one I'll go into is really connecting up the electric grid side of the world to the customer side of the world. Uh, so let me let me get into that. So what you'll see at first uh, here is really a visual of a lot of different circuits on the electric grid. So all the colors you see here are different circuits. These circuits are really a section of electrical power going to various homes. And all the dots you see are the different transformers at, um, you know, on individual streets that serve often, you know, uh, like two to five houses, um, but all come off of the same circuit. So pretty awesome view of the grid. This is what a grid system typically manages and understands. Marry that up with um, data from the rest of the world and you get a much more rich view. So those same circuits uh, with their transformers are in the background, but now you're seeing in orange, the uh, electric vehicles that are detected from a system like Opower that actually does electric vehicle detection for utilities. The key thing here is to actually understand their contact information, like the email address, because the goal in a lot of cases, if you have, let's say, an overloaded section of the grid, is to have a campaign that tries to prompt uh, users to action uh, to say, hey, we could really use your help in the, you know, during peak times or even to provide financial incentives for them to, to change their behavior uh, to help the grid. Uh, you'll see these red that are actual electric vehicle charging stations all coming from data from the US Department of Energy, all married up, all understood together uh, with intrinsic meaning that, that spans different areas. Um, and you know, I can even add in one more layer, which is like, uh, you know, this customer actually has a solar array as well. Um, so really understanding the, the holistic impact of the grid and being able to make, uh, you know, different uh, outcomes possible as a result of this data coming together. Uh, the next area I'll show is um, just data coming together uh, for EV models. So uh, first I'll show the EV models. This is data coming from the US Department of Energy. Crucial to understand, for instance, that the different models have different um, you know, le uh, electric only mile ranges. So uh, as you can see, the, the, the core battery electric vehicles here are here in blue, much higher range, which 
ultimately is a much higher impact to the grid uh, as compared to the plug-in hybrids that are down, down here in orange. Uh, so when you bring that data in and then uh, marry it up to something like engagement around the peak times of the electricity grid, you really get a sense of what's going on. So in this case, uh, from our O-Power system, which is our customer engagement system, um, we're bringing in data on electric vehicle uh, surveys. So um, we, you know, customers that go to a utility website will take online surveys. They can indicate what kind of electric vehicle they have, but ultimately that electric vehicle isn't super useful unless you can also tie it to what is that impact to the grid? What is that true impact in terms of uh, mile range? Because you know something like uh, a Lucid or a Rivian, it has way bigger impact than um, just some of these uh, plug-in hybrids down here. So that's crucial to connect that information up in terms of that intrinsic meaning and ultimately um, understand how to better plan the grid accordingly and even engage customers on for peak. Okay, other data that needs to come in and be married up with uh, the whole world is, for example, weather data. Um, and, you know, weather data is crucial for uh, everything from predicting usage for an individual customer to uh, predicting usage on the grid. So this is just an example of all the weather data that we've brought in uh, by county, by state, all, you know, all the way down to the postal code. Um, that's all right in the data exchange platform. And then lastly, I'll show um, some of that language like output that I was talking about. So we actually didn't set out to uh, produce output for generative AI. We set out very much focused on solving how do we connect data across silos and help companies connect that data. But ultimately when we, connected the data, built this ontology uh, that you see here on the left. This, this on the left is the language like output of the ontology. Um, you know, this, this led to some awesome insights that if we output language from our knowledge graph in, in, you know, in language like form, it's actually incredible for training LLMs and incredible for generative AI. Uh, so we are uh, putting this into the new Oracle Cohere service, getting amazing results um, in terms of uh, prompting LLMs for generative AI and uh, training LLMs for off of enterprise data. And I'll just show you just uh, a couple of different flavors of this knowledge like output. So right now it's on uh, meter channels. I'll switch it to the... Uh, Let's do electric vehicle charging locations. We've been talking about those a bit. So you can see the, the language like output of electric vehicle charging locations. Um, and this is again, all the electric vehicle charging locations in the US are in here. Uh, let me get rid of those. And we can look at uh, person data as language like output uh, from the customer system all married up. And then just to do one more example, um, you can do like a, a water meter um, in language like output. All, you know, totally able to be interpreted by uh, LLMs because it's language based in terms of prompting and LLM training. So just another example of how awesome it is once you get data married up in terms of intrinsic meaning. All right. Thank you so much for watching.